So how is leprosy analogous to sin? Both leprosy and sin rot us from the inside out. Now for both, we see the results on the surface, but the cause is much more deep. The problem we see are only the symptoms of the disease. It says we're not sinners because we sin. We sin because our nature is out of sin. It says for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. Now just like <clears throat> just like this disease begins to destroy us long before others can see the symptoms, sin eats away at us before others can see it. And it often starts with a private little secret sin we don't want anyone to know about. And the more and more we become numb to it, the more we begin to sin openly. And then we even begin to defend it. And then we call what is good evil, and we call evil good. And it's at that point that it spreads like a contagion. So number two, both leprosy and sin are contagious, and it causes us to be isolated. Both spread so quickly that the only safe practice is to isolate the one infected, to keep them away from everyone else. Lepers were banished, they were quarantined, and sin causes a similar separation with us. Oftentimes, it's sin which estranges us from our loved ones, and it permanently results in separation between us and God. Now, in the ancient times, lepers were prohibited from entering the temple. They weren't allowed in the temple to worship God. Sin does the same thing. When Adam and Eve fell, they hid from God. When we sin today, we do exactly the same thing. A third, both leprosy and sin are a disgusting abomination and they're against God's plan for purity. Like sin, leprosy deadens our nerves. We become numb to the disease. And what was abhorrent to us at first become the norm as we're desensitized. Lepers, because their skin is rotting, they also begin to stink, but they don't recognize their own stench. Yet, ironically, they can smell other lepers' stench. It's the same thing as sin. We don't recognize our own, but we're very quick to recognize everyone else's and say, ooh, that's disgusting, but I'm okay. Now the rags that the lepers wore, they were only fit to be for the fire. They had to be burned. So if we clothe ourselves in our own righteousness, we are also only worthy of the fire. Now remember what we just read from Isaiah. It says, For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy garment, and all of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. So even the things we do that we're proud of, that we think are good, that we want to put on display, they're just like a leper's garment to God. We're so diseased that anything we touch becomes defiled. Now God has a responsibility to keep heaven pure, to keep it clean, to keep it whole. So he cannot allow anything in heaven which has not been made clean. And this includes even our good works. Now lepers and sinners cannot cure themselves. During biblical times, there was no known medical cure. Yet we have accounts of God miraculously healing them. Sinners have the exact same plight. There's nothing they can do to remove their own sin. And those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? But Jesus said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Which brings us to the last, number five, Jesus can heal both.